Osana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. As, as we have come before God this day, on this Palm Sunday, may the Lord honor himself in our lives in the name of Jesus. Opening him, Church of Nigeria hymn 296.
dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. And today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Savior to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. The Lord be with you. We remain standing as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, bless these palms for our use and let them be for us sign of victory and grant that we who bear them may always hail him as King and Savior who reigns forever and ever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. They also those voices who lead us in worship.
but the message of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is the day which the Lord has made. Bless the Lord who forgives our sins. Together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people, meekly kneeling and saying together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors. In thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may serve you in the midst of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The collect, the readings. And the ministry of the word. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards mankind sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated. The epistle is taken from the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, chapter 1. Reading from the 17th verse. For Christ did not send me to baptize, 
but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because of foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the best things of the world and the things which are despised of God are chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. This is the word of God. It's, as we take the next hymn, the guild of stewards will assist in distribution of palms to members. <laughs>
the gospel is written at the 12th chapter of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as written by St. John, beginning at the 12th verse. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of Christ. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you for this hour. Lord, we pray that you speak to our souls, grant our ears that we may listen to your word, help us to deliver what you ask us to say to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Today, we are considering the theme, the cross, our, our satisfaction. The cross, our satisfaction. When we talk about the cross, the cross came because all have sinned. And when we talk about the cross, the cross is talking about the place of crucifixion. Is talking about putting to death. There's a lot of things that heaven is expecting us to do in the process of redemption. Because the essence of our life, the essence of our living is just about the redemption, nothing more. If we miss redemption in our life, then we have missed all. So that's why the cross is very, very important to everyone. Whether we are ignorant of it or not, we can't make light of the cross. If you see, if you open Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, he was talking about we dying. We dying. Then if you go further, to verse 5. He said, put to death. Put to death. So, all these things are pointing out to the essence of the cross. A place we put to death the things that are separating us from the love of God. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. Jesus Christ came to put to death the workings of the flesh. The cross our satisfaction. So, in that Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, he talked about the, the workings of the flesh, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. These are many more. We are the things Jesus Christ put to death on the cross. And these are the same thing we ought to put to death in our lives if we actually want to have satisfaction. Praise the Lord. 
No, there are many things that we are engaging, but most of them are not even beneficial to our soul. Many things that we are busy with in this life, but God is asking us to put to death most of them. Our flesh may not like it to go, but it's for our own good. Except we put to death many things that are in enmity with God, then we are bearing the cross of Satan. There's a cross of Satan. But we're, today we are talking about the cross of Jesus. Why I say that the cross of Satan is in um, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus Christ said, Come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He now go for that to say that, Come and take my yoke. That my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. You know, from that scripture, I understand that every neck has a yoke. Every neck has a yoke. It depends on whom, whose yoke you are bearing. Whether it is the yoke of God or the yoke of Satan. So we can say that everyone is bearing a cross. But is that the cross of Jesus that we are bearing? That's what is important. So Jesus Christ is calling us to the place of rest. And that can only be found at the feet of the cross. Praise the Lord. So what is the way to satisfaction? The way to satisfaction is the cross. That's the way to satisfaction. And Jesus Christ encouraged us in Luke, in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. He, he told us that whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. If we want that's the, the divine satisfaction from God, we cannot do away with the cross. We have to come to the cross, have to come to Jesus and take up your cross. Everyone has cross. And no one will bear your cross for you. That's the unique thing about this cross we are talking about. A mother cannot bear the cross for the children. The husband cannot do the same for the wife, neither the wife for the husband. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple, is an open, open invitation. He said, the person must deny themselves, deny him or herself, and take up the cross. Take up the cross and daily follow Jesus. You know, it sounds foolish. Just like the place we read in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you read from verse 18, it says that the message of the cross is foolishness to the people, you know, that are not saved. It sounds foolish. Why must we carry cross? Is there no other alternative? Why the cross? But no matter how foolish it sounds, it works. That's the way. We cannot use our human understanding to, to rationalize God. Most of us, we rationalize God. We think how, why, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. But what matters is that this works. The cross works. It brings satisfaction to the soul. Many things we think we are enjoying as life, they are not life. They are cancer to our souls. It's only the cross that can give us 
satisfaction. Now, I want us to see some facts about the cross. One fact, the number one fact about the cross is that the cross is bitter. The cross is bitter. It's not palatable. If you look at Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, 39, the Bible said, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. It was not palatable for Jesus. It was bitter. To the extent that he asked God, if it's possible, if it's possible, there are many things God is telling us in our lives to do away with. But we are looking at God and asking God, is there no other way we can handle this thing? There is no other way. It is only through the cross. You have to go through the cross. That's the only way we can get satisfaction. Now, let's, the number two fact is that the cross is the will of God. The second fact about cross it is the will of God. You can also see that in that 39 verse B. Uh, verse, uh, 39B. He said, not as I will, but as you will. Then in verse 42, he went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. So, it's the will of God. Because after that, God did not take the cross away. If it's not the will of God for us to go through the cross, for us to nail these things at the cross, you have taken it away from Jesus. Jesus will not have passed that route. But heaven have looked there is no other way to salvage human being except through the cross. It may not be palatable, but it's a fact that that's the will of God. Praise the Lord. Then the number three fact about the cross is that cross calls for endurance. Cross calls for endurance. If you open Hebrews chapter, 11, chapter 12 verse 2, it talked about how Jesus went uh, uh, along with the cross. It was not easy for him. The Bible says that, the, that Jesus, the pioneer and perfect of our faith, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning his shame. So, he, there is, it wasn't easy for him, but he had to endure. He endured the cross because of the joy that is said before him. I don't know if we are looking at any joy at the end of the cross. Except you see this joy. You may think that everything you are doing, everything about the cross is useless. But there is a joy that is said before, before everyone. As long as you endure this cross... You have to get this joy. And the joy we are talking about, that's the divine satisfaction. Jesus Christ endured the cross. You know, there, apart from enduring the cross, there are things that come with that endurance. People can cajole you. You can be mocked. You can be insulted. You can be called names. People will say you're a Jew person. You don't know what's up. Because of this cross, they did the same to Jesus. If you open Matthew chapter 27, uh, verse, uh, chapter 27, verse 39, they were hauling insult on him on the cross, and they were saying many things against him. You know, they spit on him, but Jesus Christ was not distracted because he knew his target, and the target is the cross. Those who pass by hold insult at him. I don't know the insults you are getting or you think that you will get about, on, about this journey of, of the cross. You have to endure it. 
You have to endure it. They insulted Jesus. He endured it. So we have to do the same. Then we have to also be mindful. We have to be also mindful that there, are, there will be suggestions for us to abandon the cross. Jesus Christ was cajoled to the extent that he was cajoled to abandon the cross. He, they told him in that 27 verse 40, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the son of God. I consider this as a temptation. You know, we consider the first three after the fasting as temptation. This is inclusive. If, if you look through the life of Jesus Christ, this kind of temptation to make a point, you want to make a point, you want to prove a point that you are this or that, and thereby coming down from the cross, they want him to prove that he's the son of God by coming down. So we have to know at the back of our mind Never to come down from the cross. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, never come down from the cross. Because if you come down from the cross, you have lost the battle. If you come down from the cross, you have lost the crown. Maybe Satan realized that this person is getting somewhere. Satan realized the mistake. I should not have allow this person to be on this cross a lot is going to be you know to happen to him if Christ fulfilled this cross mandate and he was bringing people to tell him if you want to prove yourself to be the son of God come down from the cross it can be us in our places of work you, you think that you have taken a lot of it you cannot take it any longer you want to come down from the cross to show them who you are. Never come down from the cross because the, all, the, the whole effort and the toys you have gone through as a believer will be wasted. You will have been wasted if Jesus Christ came down to prove that he, he is the son of God. You don't need to prove to anybody. You don't need to prove to anybody. Just be on that cross daily and learn of God. May God help us that we are not going to follow the route of vanity, but we are going to follow the route of the cross. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We never argument. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one 
Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Shall we kneel? Majesty, worship is majesty. Unto this morning to worship his majesty so you want to raise up your voice and worship his majesty this morning thank him for the gift of life thank him for making you see another Palm Sunday thank him because Christ went to the cross to complete the world of our salvation to ensure that we receive forgiveness. Whatever forgiveness that you have received, let us thank His Majesty for bringing it unto you. Let us give Him thanks, let us give Him praise. Let us pray that His work that He did on the cross of Calvary shall not be in vain in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let us thank him for his faithfulness. Over our life, let us pray that this Palm Sunday that we're celebrating today shall not be our last in the mighty name of Jesus. We have heard a message about the cross. The cross is at the heart of Christianity. The cross is a place where we put to death all those things that will not glorify God. The cross is a place where we endure. Christ endured the cross. In the message this morning we heard that Christ was even cajoled that if you are the son of Christ, we are sorry for the Son of God that He should come down because He promised to rebuild the temple in three days. So come down and do it. Yes, He had the power to abandon the cross at that point to really prove that I am God. But if He had done that, our Christianity will have been in vain. Ask that that cross we should carry, even though it is imaginary, that that cross. You will not abandon it in the name of Jesus. In different phases of life, we have been tempted to abandon our cross. We have been tempted to abandon our principles. Ask that this cross that you carry, particularly during this Lenten season, that we have separated ourselves from the world, ask God, to continue to empower you so that that cross you will not abandon in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ rode triumphantly into Jerusalem to complete the work of our salvation. And Christ said in John 12, 15, he said, fear not daughter of Zion. You can also go ahead and say, fear not, son of Zion. 
Behold, the king cometh. How is the king coming into your life? How are you receiving the king? People went and dropped you know, their valuables on the road so that the king can ride. How are you using your valuables? What God has given unto you to serve him, to praise him? Fear not. That is what Christ says. Fear not this morning. You have a choice to choose Christ or to choose something else. But as for me, I choose Christ. Will you see the same of yourself? Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Do you need grace? Do you want to obtain mercy so that you can walk through the troublous times? This is the time for you to ask because Christ over 2,000 years ago went onto the cross to bring us salvation. But perhaps you have deviated from that path. This is the time for you to obtain mercy and ask for grace to move on in this Christian race. So that when the day of judgment shall come, Christ will not say, depart from me you walk off in equity. At this time, let us lift up our church fathers from our primate, our archbishop, bishop, and missioner, our archdeacon and vicar and his wife, and the entire body of Christ that God will continually be with us so that we will not depart from his presence that wherever we go his presence will go with us the same path that you told this past week this past month, this past years some others told that same path but they are no longer here. What is it that God has found in you that has kept you up until this time? So let us ask God to lift all of us up and make all of us vessels of honor. Make our church fathers vessels of honor that in the race that they are running, they will not fall. It is easy for men to make men of God fall. Let us pray that these ones will not fall in the name of Jesus. As we look up to them to lead us that they will not disappoint God. Let us now bring our personal petition unto God and say, God, you know why I came to church this morning? Lord, meet me at my points of needs. Where I need you most, Lord, meet me. Do not leave me alone. Do not let the word, word mock me. As you said, you are a child of God. And this is what you are going through. Come join us. We will show you the way. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Let us pray for our children. They are back home from school on holidays. Let us pray that the period that they will be home, that the Holy Spirit would indwell in them 
so that they will not go amiss. That kidnappers will not kidnap them. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. Nigeria is our Jerusalem. The Bible says those who pray for Jerusalem, that peace shall be with them. So we want peace in Nigeria. We want progress in this country. We want God to take over the hearts of our leaders so that they can do good for this nation. The Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Let us pray that goodness and mercy shall follow Nigeria. Because if Nigeria is at peace, we will be at peace. Everything will be perfect for us. Let us thank him for what he has done. Let us thank him because all the points that we have read will turn testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. For in Jesus' wonderful name we are prayed. Shall we say the prayer of grace together? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled all to one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. We beseech you, O Lord, God of all flesh, that as we commemorate the triumphant entry of your Son into Jerusalem, grant us grace to triumph over all sin and on sin evil around us in the name of Jesus. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You may know. Accept our precious Heavenly Father through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The cup which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Though we are many, we are one body because we share the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Holy things to holy people. If any is holy, let him come. If any is not, let him repent. The Lord is here. One Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father, bless forever. Amen. The table is set. Communicants of the Anglican Church and other churches in communion with the Anglican Church are welcome to the Lord's table. Others should sing and pray along and endeavor to see the vicar after the service.
Last night I lay asleep in the came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven on My dream was changed, the streets no longer wrong. Hushed away the glad Hosanna, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with misery, the morn was cold and chilled. As a shudder of a cross arose upon a lonely hill, as a shudder of a cross. Again, the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on the streets, the gates were open wide, and all who would might enter, and no one was denied. sun to shine by day it was a new Jerusalem that would not pass away it was a new Jerusalem that would Jerusalem, sing for the night is on. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna forevermore. Hosanna in the highest.
we take the ablution hymn, we will give our tithes and Sunday offering and all others to honor the Lord, the giver of good gifts. And we pray that he will continue to bless and honor us all in Jesus' name.
Precious Father, we want to thank you. We give you glory for bringing us into another season. Father, we thank you for the celebration of Palm Sunday 2022. Even Lord Almighty, as we celebrate your triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Father, we thank you because you are the creator of heaven and earth and nothing can hinder you. Father, we thank you for the grace of life. Father, we thank you for the privilege to bring before your altar this morning, O God, a tithe, offering, first fruit, maintenance, fund, seed of faith, and other offerings as you have blessed your children. Lord, I pray upon this altar you behold the offering of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask, O God, that these offerings shall be acceptable before you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
child of God, I pray for you. That as you go forth, the power of the Lord will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that as you go forth, the blessings of the Lord will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray that in this new week, the Lord Almighty will lead you. Where there are greener pastors in the name of Jesus Christ. If you can hear me, I pray that the work of your hand, this new week will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that Lord will bless you and the blessing of God upon you will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the blessing of God that maketh one rich without adding sorrow shall be your portion this week in the name of Jesus Christ. No sickness for you. I pray calamity will not befall you. I pray affliction will not come near you. I ask that the peace of the Lord in this season we rest and be upon you and the work of your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are mindful of as many that may want to give and they did not have. Lord, you are the giver of all good things, the help of the helpless. This season, I pray, as many, Lord Almighty, that are in this position, you will raise them up in the name of Jesus. Father, you will send help unto them from above in the name of Jesus Christ. And in this season, even as we go into Passion Week, Father, you will have compassion upon your children, and it shall be well with them, both now and forevermore. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. As our Savior taught us, so we knew to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Prayer of thanksgiving together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thought your hallelujah would be louder. Shout hallelujah. Let's do something for Jesus. Do something for Jesus. We are grateful to God for another opportunity in His presence, and we thank God for another celebration, commemoration of Palm Sunday in the year 2022. May His name forever be praised and glorified in Jesus' name. We'd like to welcome those worshiping God along with us for the first time. If today is your first day, Please stand as we welcome you very specially. Because we we'll love you just the way you have come. You are something more than God. May you really be blessed. Really be blessed. May you really be blessed. May you really be blessed. Oh, yeah. blessed you and we know that the blessings will be permanent in your lives in Jesus name. Please after this service outside the door to my left, please uh, wait for a few seconds so that we can tell you more about this church and know more about you and the Lord will continue to bless and honor you in Jesus name. Please be seated. 
We want to celebrate with those celebrating their birthdays between today and Saturday. Celebrants of the week, please stand as we rejoice with you. Celebrants of the week. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Long life, good health, greater grace in Jesus' name. We pray that you will continue to have reasons to celebrate in the name of Jesus. We congratulate Papa Ayo Adibanjo, who is 94 today, and Mama, who is 92 tomorrow. And we pray that the Lord will continue to lengthen their days in the name of Jesus. Please turn with me to page four as we run through some of our coming events. Our Lenten diet continues, although from tomorrow it is Holy Week services, Holy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and of course, on Thursday, we have the Monday Thursday service. All the services will be at 6 p.m., and of course, on Friday, we have the Good Friday, 9 to 10, the first service, and the meditation um, hours, 12 noon to 3 p.m. May the Lord continue to bless and honor you, even as you are part of these services in Jesus' name. We'd like to also announce that the Easter Sunday services will be at 7.30 and at 10 a.m. as usual. Um, in my own experience, by God's grace, we will be displaying the culture and tradition of Asaba people. Please note Asaba people, and we are ready. We are ready, and we want you to join us uh, as we also join the entire diocese uh, members of the Diocese of Lagos on Easter Monday at the Centenary City. May the Lord glorify himself in our lives in Jesus' name. We join our Father in God and our brother uh, as he gets ready to celebrate his 40th birthday. Where is, okay, the celebrants. The Reverend Ola Olua Akinshola. By the grace of God, on 23rd, 23rd of April, we join him as he gives glory to God. Uh, at, a, uh, at an as anniversary at 3 p.m. We pray that God will grant you many more years in the land of the living in Jesus' name. I'm sure you also know that you have to make him smile uh, at 40. Eh? It's not easy now at 40. And the Lord will continue to bless and honor you in the name of Jesus. The Synod, as we get ready, we appreciate all of you uh, for all you do uh, to make sure that we have a huge success even as we host the diocese um, for the synod. We pray the Lord will continue to bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Item 10 on page 5, bands of marriage. We publish the bands of marriage between Ezine Okeke and Kolawole Samuel. If anyone has any reason why these persons may not lawfully be married, Please contact us or remain silent forever. This is the second time of asking. We pray that the mighty hand of God will rest upon them even as they begin this journey in Jesus' name. There are vacancies. Check item 7, I'm sorry, page 7, item 13, vacancy for an accountant, and of course, vacancy for front desk and administrative personnel. Please do the needful, or if you know anyone who falls and who um, needs job and uh, falls into these categories, please get in touch as indicated on item 13 on page 7. Itedo Love Outreach, we are most grateful for, to those of you who took up the initiative that are saying that we shouldn't end the feeding at Christmas and you've been putting resources together so that we'll be able to feed people again at Easter. 
We'll be going on this on Good Friday by the grace of God. At 6.30, we have film show, and then we'll feed the people around the place. We pray the Lord will continue to bless our work in his vineyard in the name of Jesus. Item 17, Evangelical Ministry. We'll be having a meeting in Military Avenue's 10 a.m. service. We pray that the Lord is going to bless their work in his vineyard in the name of Jesus. Congratulations to our own Mr. Precious Emeka S.A.N., the coordinator of Davis Men's Fellowship, on his appointment as Deputy Chancellor of uh, uh, Diocese on the Niger, and he's holding the Thanksgiving service. I thought you were clapping. Thanksgiving service we we'll hold on Tuesday, by God's grace, um, uh, April, um, Easter Tuesday at St. Matthias Anglican Church. And Paul, we pray the Lord will continue to bless and honor him, even as he serves God's purpose in his vineyard in Jesus' name. And finally, we share in the pains of Mr. Chi Diebele and Mrs. Oye Nwoke on the call to glory of their father-in-law and father respectively. Uh, we pray the Lord will comfort um, the entire family and continue to provide for them and honor them in the name of Jesus. At 10 a.m., feel free to join us as we proclaim and as we allow Jesus to ride on us. Eh? He rode on a donkey, but as many that offer themselves, he will ride on them. Can you turn to someone beside you? I said, let Jesus ride on you. Always make yourself available and the Lord will bless you. As you go forth into this new week, the eyes of God will watch over you. You will not struggle for survival. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. His favor will envelop you. Your joy will not diminish. You will not have any reason to bury your head in shame. You will not lose your peace. You will not lose your peace in the name of Jesus. And the power of God will uphold you. Please rise on your feet as we take our song for the air. We will take the three verses.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
welcome you to All Souls Church, Lekki. Our parish is one of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Lagos. We exist to glorify God, edify believers, and multiply disciples for our Lord Jesus Christ. Led by our diocesan commissioner and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we stand on a mandate with fivefold ministries, namely priestly, pastoral, prophetic, prayer, and praise ministries. Join us to worship and honor God as He nourishes and refreshes us.